It's early December, and 10 miles off the coast of Oregon, a raw northwest day lashes anyone foolish enough to step outside. The big ship is called Voga Mia. It's the length of two football fields, and it needs to motor up the Columbia River to pick up cargo. The patch of water separating the river from the ocean is called the Bar, and the Columbia River Bar can be one of the roughest sections of water in the world. More than 2,000 ships have gone down here since the late 1700s, which is why a bar pilot is about to get on board and help steer the big ship safely across the bar. They're self-employed individuals that every day go to work and risk their lives, and so I do think that they are looked up to by a lot of people in the industry. And John Coyle is chairman of the Columbia River Steamship Operators Association, that's an industry group involved with the big freight ships. These guys are fearless. They go out in storms and, you know, we have uh, terminals, uh, grain elevators. We have all types of industry that is waiting for these vessels. And the schedules are very important because there's huge amounts of money that are involved in being on time, uh, being where you're supposed to be, because we have all this cargo coming in through rail and uh, barges, and if the ships don't arrive on time, it costs money. It is a constant, pressure-packed logistical dance between the trains delivering wheat and grain and elevators loading the ships and the ships clearing the docks so that others can get in. The traffic on the Columbia River and closer to Portland, the Willamette River, is nearly constant, with an average of 10 ships coming or going across the bar each day. The Oregonian's Mark Graves created this graphic, which shows the traffic over 30 days during 2014. Total value of all that commerce is roughly $24 billion a year. Yep, that's with a B. <laughs> I recently got to go out with yep. the pilots to see what it's like on a calm day. Our guide is Dan Jordan. He spent 24 years on big ships in seas all over the world, and for the last 14 years has been a Columbia River bar pilot. No, I still like the ships. I like working on the water, and, and being a pilot gets me home more. Today, we're heading out on a $6 million <clears throat> boat owned by the pilots. So this is the pilot boat Astoria. Um, it's what we'll be taking out today to board a couple of ships. Watch your step as you come across here. The bar pilots each own a piece of their company, sort of like partners in a law firm. They, in turn, get paid by the companies that own the ships. They've invested in fast, safe transportation like these pilot boats to get them out to the ships fast and without any fuss, no matter the weather. 70% of the time when it's not awful outside, they arrive using their helicopter, lowered on a hoist to the ship below. The mission is simple. We're here to make sure that the ships get in and out safely and don't cause you know, infrastructure or environmental damage. It's a fancy way of saying they don't run aground. Or hit a bridge. Yeah, right. that'd be bad. Uh, yeah, it's, if, if you didn't have pilots, um, then you're kind of putting your whole port at jeopardy. The pilots board the ships miles beyond the Columbia River bar to give everyone a chance to prepare. It takes knowledge and confidence to guide such a huge vessel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to the bar. Thank you. The pilots put together this graphic to give us all an idea of the size. Portland's Wells Fargo Tower is 546 feet tall. The ship here, 900 feet long. As we head out from Astoria, we come across a ship heading to Longview, probably to get a load of logs. The pilot on board is steering without touching the controls. And your guy, Jay, is up there saying five degrees to the right or mm -hmm. starboard? Well, there's a couple of ways we can give the directions as far as the course. One is to say a course, steer course one, three, two. And if you want to change, say one, three, four, and little courses like that. For bigger course changes, we give rudder commands. Okay. Port 10, starboard 20. Get them close to where you want, and then you tell them what course to steer again. Huh. The Columbia River is unique and powerful. There's not much of a delta allowing it to spread out at the mouth. So its current hits the tides of the Pacific Ocean with sustained force, sometimes creating monster waves and constantly changing the shape of the river bottom. It's obvious to you, but what what makes it tricky about coming across the bar here? Uh, the bars were currents, swells, um, and sediment all meet. Um, so it's a little shallower there. Um, the river current going out meets opposing swells coming in and changes hourly. Wow. Um, 
So you've got this huge push of water from the river and then the tides coming in or just being Right, slack. well, or, or swell coming in. Okay. When, when the current hits it, it makes a swell bigger. Yeah. Maybe breaks. Wow. Not today, it's a beautiful day today, but in the wintertime, you know, we pilot ships in you know, 20 foot seas. Wow. Waves that big go over the top of this pilot boat and can make even the biggest ships lurch and roll. Yeah, got a chart. The pilots are on call 24 7. Unless the weather is so bad that the bar is closed, they will meet ships anytime, day or night. When it's really bad outside, the helicopter cannot fly, and the pilots revert to boarding the ship in the same method that's been used since their founding 173 years ago the rope ladder. And today it's pretty calm, but a lot of days it's pretty dangerous, huh? In wintertime, it can be. It, you know, it's calm today, so for the ship it's safe, but you don't want to be you know, complacent. You're still climbing a rope ladder up the side of a ship. Yeah. Uh, so. And is that the best technology? I mean, I know you fly on, but for the ladders, a rope ladder hanging off the side they, of a ship. They, yeah, they've tried lots of other things, uh, mechanical hoists and all, but for a pilot climbing up onto a ship or trying to get on a ship, you're relying on the maintenance of that equipment from the crew member. Yeah. And if there's an issue halfway up, you're relying on the fact that they might speak English. Uh -huh. um, so the pilot ladder, once it's rigged, it puts it all in our hands. They shoot video every time they get on or off a ship so they can study exactly what happened if something feels wrong. Some of the videos they shared would make the bravest among us think twice. Remember, there's no safety line here. No. Misjudge the role of the ship or crash of the waves, and you could fall into the ocean. I timed that one wrong, didn't I? <laughs> that has happened. It happened with deadly consequences on January 2006. Pilot Kevin Murray was getting off a ship in a storm. He fell and died before he could be rescued. So why would anyone do this? Phil Mateo says he just loves being outside. Like I say, 90% of the time, I'm like, wow, I can't believe they're paying me to do this. But 10% of the time, he's like, I can't believe I'm doing this, no matter what they're paying me. So. Mateo spent 27 years at sea before he became a pilot 11 years ago. He said getting on the rope ladder takes real focus. You're watching swell, you're watching the rise of the boat as you're coming alongside. If it's a big swell, you want to catch it on the top of the swell. You don't want to get on the ladder and have the boat come up and hit you basically, which could happen, and you don't want to do it as you're coming down because then you, the boat's dropping pretty fast and somebody swells. So. He said the pilots help protect the environment. Everybody's concerned about it. Nobody wants an oil spill out here. We're approaching the Federal Yellowstone. It's a bulk carrier, basically an empty cargo ship headed up the Columbia River. It's what Phil's going to get on. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's go outside. We go outside to get in position for the shots and it feels dangerous. You're right. We're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean after all. Okay, not the middle, but the water is super deep here. We're wearing life jackets because the left and right side of the pilot boat has no railing. This is a stretch you really want to hold on. That way they can use either ball. side to snuggle up next to the ship. And let's just get, get inside here or... Dan ushers us into a safe spot with Probably hand here. railings all around. A light rain is falling, just so we can get a small sense of what the weather can do out here. This is routine for the pilots, but for me, it felt so weird to motor up to this huge ship as it putters along waiting for us. You can tell it's empty because it's sitting high in the water. Once it's loaded, that rust will be below the water line. An empty ship can be harder to get on because it can roll more side to side. Notice he's got a harness on. As we get closer, the deckhand comes out of the pilot boat and gets strapped in. He's here to help the pilot if he needs anything at the last second. The strap to his harness makes sure he does not go overboard. The water rushing between the boat and the ship is a constant reminder of the danger here. You come up that side. And then it's time for Phil. He's wearing a helmet just in case and grabs that thick rope for safety as our skipper eases even closer to the ship. And then... So once he gets up, we back the boat away. So if he falls, he falls in the water instead of on the boat. Wow. Just like that, He's on board. In two and a half hours, he'll have the ship across the bar and waiting at anchor in Astoria for the river pilot, who will guide it to whichever dock it's going to. And then we turn for our next ship, an oil barge. What do you like about being out here? <laughs> no walls. <laughs> you hear that a lot in the pilot world. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 
He said retirement age varies among the pilots, but with the danger out here, sooner is better than later. I guess when, when, uh, when I was thinking about what, I'm, what am I going to do for a career, high school age, I like sailing, I like skiing, sailing paid better. Um, I've watched a lot of people commute to the city to work and commute traffic just isn't my thing. Yeah. It's pretty wide uh, open so out here. It is that, yeah. yeah. And it's always different, it's, it's fun. The barge surprised me. I didn't realize there are containers full of gas moving down the coastline and then up the Columbia River. This is an articulating tug and barge. A tugboat pushing a uh, oil barge. Came down from Anacortes, gasoline, unleaded gas uh, for the Portland area. Dan said the containers typically show up during the summer months when we're all driving cars more miles. Since this one is full, it's lower in the water and easier for the pilot, Bill Black, to get on board. But once again, no safety lines, nothing between him and the ocean if he slips or something breaks. And yet, despite my nervously watching them, the pilots climb the ladder with ease, night and day, every day of the year that the bars open. With all of the traffic on our rivers and all of the possibilities for disaster, it feels amazing that everything runs smoothly, but it does. Oh, just walk into work? Yeah. <laughs> Pull up to the ladder, climb up a few steps, and, and you're at work. It's not a bad commute for us. 